I have a word that I want to just release to all of you tonight. Uh, it's so funny that, uh, that Pastor Denise started out by talking about the prophet's reward. Um, because I had a vision a few months ago where I saw, how many here have ever had visions? That's God speaking to you in a picture. How many have ever had dreams? Spiritual dreams, okay? Well, let me just say that I had a vision. I, I was just, uh, I was just walking around my house, praying in tongues, speaking, praying in the spirit. And I had this vision of a gate. It looked like an old medieval castle gate. And the gate was locked up. It had chains on it and a giant padlock on this gate. And, um, and as I looked at that, I knew that that was not what God was saying should be happening in this time. See, the Lord had spoken to me just a couple of months before out of 1 Corinthians 16, 9. And I'm going to just use that as kind of the launching point to begin tonight. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. And Paul declared this. He said, God has set a great open door before me for an effective work. How many believe that in this time, God is setting a great open door before you? Let me tell you, Pastor Paul said it tonight. He said, come on, guys, we've never been in a season with such great open doors. Come on, the Lord is saying to us, guys, we need to understand this is a season like no other, that it is a time of great, effectual, open doors, open opportunities for a great, effectual work. Let me give you the rest of the scripture. And there are many adversaries. Woohoo! <laughs> That's all in the same scripture, guys. How many know that sometimes to go through the open door, through the gate that God has created for us, we may have to face an adversary? How many have ever felt that to be true? But I felt like the Lord said to me when I, I looked at that scripture and I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, what is that going to mean? I heard somebody prophesy and they said, God says we're bringing you into a new season of battle. And I thought, when did the old season of battle end? Okay, because the old season hasn't quite ended yet. So, <laughs> But when I saw that about the adversaries, I felt that the Lord said, encourage my people that I'm actually giving them their adversaries to their advantage and that your opposition will become your opportunity come on think about this think about when David went against Goliath that was an opposition but when David took out Goliath come on he moved into the palace and he married the king's daughter come on there was an there was an elevation there was a promotion that came because he was willing to face the giant he was willing to stand and to fight for God. So I'm declaring to you that God has set a great open door before you and before this house in this season. You may have to face some adversaries, but God's given them to you for your advantage. God's going to turn everything the enemy's meant against you for evil for good. This is a prophetic decree. This is the word of the Lord over your lives and over this house that all that the enemies tried to bring against you for cursing is being turned to a blessing for you. Deuteronomy 23, 5, because he loves you. Come on, he loves you. He's turning it around for you. <laughs> so I asked the Lord, Lord, what is a, what is a prophet's reward? What is the prophet's reward? You know what the Lord said to me? He said, well, Jane, it's the way I rewarded the prophets. So I went back and studied the prophets. Think about Moses. Moses was a prophet. He saw God face to face. Come on, guys. David was a prophet. He was a man after God's own heart. Samuel was a prophet. Not one word fell to the ground. How many would believe that not one thing we pray, not one thing we decree, not one thing we prophesy falls to the ground? I'm telling you, we're coming into a different season, an accelerated season. The prophet's reward was an anointing for breakthrough. You see, David got a word from God, you're going to be king. He decomai that word. Come on, he received that word. But then... 
he went out onto the battlefield and he faced Goliath. And when he faced Goliath, he wasn't just going, oh God, thank you for that word. Come on, he used the prophetic word to do what 2 Timothy uh, 1, 14 says when it says we're to war a warfare with the prophecies that have gone before us. Come on, David Lambano, the word of the Lord, and it gave him the strength and the courage to go out and face Goliath. Come on, there are Goliaths that are going to fall in this city. Let me say that again. There are Goliaths that are falling in this city. I'm telling you this, the devil overplayed his hand last year. He overplayed his hand. You know what ended up happening? God turned the curse to a blessing. Because all of a sudden the entire world focused in on Las Vegas and began to bombard this city with prayer and fasting and declarations and prophecies. And God began to fight for your city in a supernatural, miraculous way. You are in the middle right now of one of the most phenomenal city transformations that's on the face of the earth. Come on. You're facing Goliaths, though. You're going through your open door, <laughs> facing some Goliaths. But remember what, remember what uh, happened on that battlefield. The second David stepped out, Goliath started to prophesy to David. Did you realize that? Did you realize that the devil prophesies? What is prophecy? Well, in the spiritual terms, it's God speaking. But God's speaking into our future. But do you know that the devil tries to speak into your future? Come on, the devil tries to speak about failure. The devil start, tries to speak confusion and chaos. The devil tries to speak that you're never going to succeed. Come on, the devil tries to, tries to beat you down with his words. And when David shows up on the battlefield, Goliath mocks him and laughs at him. And it says he cursed him by his gods. Come on, that's a spirit of witchcraft. And a lot of the church goes, oh, spirit of witchcraft, I don't need to be here. No, no, no. David just stepped right up and stepped right into it. You know why? Because he knew greater is he that's in me. Greater is he that's in me. Amen. He went out and he faced Goliath. And Goliath said to him, he said, who is this little boy that you send out against me? The, listen to the prophecy. Today, I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air. See, he was prophesying. <laughs> when the devil prophesies to you, let me tell you what you do. You prophesy right back come on we gotta learn to prophesy to the devil <laughs> come on what did David do he said you come at me with a sword and a spear and a javelin but I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts whom you have defied Come on. He starts to prophesy. This day, I'm going to take your head from you. This day, I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air. That all the world will know that there is a God in Israel. Lift up your hands. Father, I declare that same spirit of breakthrough upon each and every individual. That God in their homes, in their jobs, in their communities, in their schools, God, in their friendships. Father God, that you're going to put the spirit of David upon them, Father God. Lord, that you're going to loose the boldness and the courage to stand up against the Goliath systems and against the, de the demonic uh, strongholds, God, and prophesy the word of the Lord that brings life the word of the Lord that brings deliverance and the word of the Lord that brings freedom Lord I loose them father God as David's on their battlefields in Jesus name amen amen